Good morning, everyone. My name is Ivan Castillo, the cameraman Luis Vega. We both are naturalists. Thanks for watching. Uh, today, what we're going to do is share a little bit of the rainforest. Uh, we represent SECOS, the Sara Piqui Conservation Learning Center. And SECOS is so important for the rainforest because it's doing environmental education in somehow to protect what we have. It's a big responsibility to have such a diverse uh, environment. Let me show you where we are just to give you an idea. And then we're going to go to the forest. How exciting is that? Let me show you. So, this is the Costa Rica map. And right here, this is San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Uh, at the west of San Jose, there is the airport. So if you come, uh, that's one of the airports. We have two. There is another airport in Iberia here in Guanacaste. And this is the other airport. And then there are two routes. The main route to go or to come to Sarapiqui uh, is all the way down here to the central mountain range where there are active volcanoes. And right here is it's where we are. This red dot right here is Sarapiqui. This is where this rainforest is located. This is where the headquarters of SECOS, the nonprofit organization, is located too. This is the Caribbean site. And uh, the rain comes from the Caribbean side and eventually hits these walls, which is the mountain range. And that's why we have a microclimate. That's why it rains a lot. That's why this forest is evergreen. And that's why it's, that's one reason why it's so diverse. So let's go to the forest. Let me show you a little bit of what we have and how lucky we are to live close to a rainforest. Let's go. All right, this is a, a good habitat. Believe me, this is a really good habitat. One of the best habitats that I know, one of the best spots in Costa Rica to find one of the yules, what I call personally, the rock star of this country. It's a really famous species. And let me show you, okay. Here we have a good amount of plants. Most of them, they have big leaf kind of wide leaf and there is water there's a pond right there there's a pond and it's dark you know the amount of sunlight that comes through is not much so this is like a micro habitat right here and that's why we can find this jewel that i'm gonna show you come and follow me and i tried to set what we call it uh, digiscoping. We're not gonna set a scoop, which is a floating scoop. There you go. It has a good camouflage. You have to pay attention and you're gonna find it. Okay, we're gonna look through this scoop. It looks green now. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's a frog. That's called the red eyes tree frog. Probably you are wondering why you don't see the red eyes. It's a good question. No red eyes now. It's because this species is nocturnal. So right now it's sleeping. And uh, when they are sleeping, they do it underneath of the leaf. They don't want to be too obvious because there are many predators. It's dangerous here. There are snakes, there are birds, there are mammals. And because it's dangerous, they, wanna, they don't want to be too attractive. They are really attra attractive at night, but at daytime, what you see is just green. Okay, red eyes, close. Then, this beautiful webbing, you know, like a membrane between the fingers is orange. So it goes like this. The blue on that side, on one side, uh, on the other side, is gonna be covered by the front legs, like this. And then the blue between the ankles is gonna be also behind or covered by the ankles. You know, it's totally green. And then the intensity of the green goes down. That way it's gonna match pretty well with the leaf. That's why you don't see it. And right here, 
this is a picture of it. Well, it's not a, a real picture. It's a funny looking frog, but they have a really bright red eyes and this is the perfect habitat. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you right here in the pond, there are probably hundreds of young ones, so tadpoles. They have a complete metamorphosis, that means they have eggs, and then the eggs, the eggs are uh, laid, you know, underneath of the leaf, above the water, then they're gonna drop into the water, three months there, and then they're gonna come out as a young stage, uh, which is a combination between a frog and a tadpole. And they are really vulnerable at this point because I call, call them the teenager stage. You know, when you are a teenager, sometimes you are in, in, a, in a point that you know what you are. You know, are you a kid? Are you an adult? It's the same thing. And that's when eventually a, a snake or a bird, in most of the cases, will eat them. So, and then, you know, they're going to spread and find their own territory. But yeah, this is a perfect spot to find them, and I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that you got to see it. Let's see if, if I can show you a second one. They are sleeping here. Follow me. I want to move this leaf really careful because I don't want to disturb it much, just to give you an idea. Um, how they sleep. Really gentle, I have to be really gentle. Right there. This is a second one, this is a male. Mm -hmm. Look how, you know, the bright colors that you normally see in those wonderful pictures are not visible now. Good job, it's a good job. Um, the way that they camouflage themselves and probably it's too far for the camera but there is another one up there just to give you an idea that it could be um, really high sometimes on trees like easy easy you know 16 feet what is important for them it's the dark, you know, the moisture. All right, I hope you enjoyed that um, frog. And now we're gonna continue with something else. As I mentioned, this rainforest how it has a lot of good surprises to show us. So, vamonos. Hey, so um, you have been walking a bit from the frog, the area where we saw the frog, but we would like to show you the river. We have the river, and on this river there is a suspension bridge. For the ones that are afraid to the heights, this is a good opportunity, you know, to see how it looks like. And we're gonna show you the river, but also it's really nice because you can see the edge of the forest, the edge of the uh, secondary forest which is here where we are and then the edge of the mature forest or the old growth forest and then we're gonna go into the forest so follow me and enjoy the view this is our suspension bridge which is about 162 meters long One of the advantages of having a bridge is not just the access to the rainforest, to the old growth forest, it's also the view. In this case, we are like halfway to the top of the trees, which is a different layer of the rainforest. Remember the rainforest is divided in horizontal layers where uh, you can find different kind of wildlife depending on the on the layer that you are. 
You can hear that really relaxing, you know, sound of the water. That's the Sarapiki River, which is the name of this town. There you have it, this is the Sala Piki River, nice and clean. Good river to practice white water rafting. It's about 85 kilometers long. Remember the volcanoes that are mentioned uh, on the map. Yeah, there is one called Barba Volcano. And that's where this river come from, all the way down to Nicaragua. Hey, <laughs> well, this is so peaceful that I'm just looking around and listening to all the sounds that we have. But uh, I was, you know, paying attention to the plants in here where we are, the understory. I was mentioning that the rainforest is divided in horizontal layers. This is called the understory. And these plants are amazing because they survive in a such a difficult environment. Remember that plants require the sunlight, you know, to produce their own food and then to produce our food. But then these, la these plants are too low and the forest is so tall that the amount of sunlight that is able to come all the way down here is not much. Around 2%. That is not much. And that's why they look dark green. Most of them, they look really dark green. Some of them almost blue. As you go gradually all the way up through the different layers of the forest, these leaves, little by little, you're going to see how the color goes to light green. And those trees that they have such a benefit to be exposed to the sunlight, they're gonna have much more energy to produce their own food and then produce food for the animals that are found here where we are where I am now on this understory and it feels humid I'm sweating now a couple of mosquitoes around but this is the real feeling of the rainforest and 
I invite you, you know, to come one day and, and experience it. But for now, I'm gonna show more of this environment. So I was about to jump over this lock and then I found this is a lizard. The name of this lizard is Helmet Lizard, related to Basilis, the ones that runs on the water. But this one is an inhabitant of the mature forest, old growth forest. And it has a really good camouflage. Most of the time you find them on trunks. That's why it has this colors it's called helmet lizard because it has a crest on the neck look how it matches really well with the color of the trunk really good camouflage this is about a foot foot long You don't have an idea how exciting I am. Uh, we were birding days ago in this trail and we found a venomous species, a venomous reptile. And uh, it's in a different spot. It's about five meters where we saw it that day. And it's right here, right there. It's a hook nose pit piper. It's a venomous snake related to rattlesnakes and fertile lands pay attention to the head the diamond shaped head look at those eyes the vertical pupil but right in front of the head believe it or not there is something else there is a frog with a perfect camouflage that we found right next to it but the snake it seems like recently ate something and I'm pretty sure that a snake noticed that there is a frog inside in front because they have this heat sensor that's why they are called pit vipers they have this heat sensor so this frog must be really careful and jump away pretty soon wow how lucky what a morning well we would like to wait and see what happens but i have more to show you let's go so i was wondering why leaves were falling on my head the thing is we just found a mammal. We have frogs already. We have lizards and snakes. Guess what? We have a mammal and it's a, actually an endangered species. It's a northern tamandua. It's an anteater. right now it's just scratching the branches on those trees looking for termites even though they are called anteaters most of the time you find them eating termites those juicy and tasty termites and I don't blame him I'm hungry right now so let's continue Well, it's been a really good morning. I think we were lucky and I'm really happy to share a part of the forest, part of the species with you. For those that have been here in Costa Rica and know me, thanks for watching. And for the ones that haven't been here yet, we would like to invite you to visit us. And 
any support that you can give to Sarapiki Conservation Learning Center, it will be really welcome because remember we have a big responsibility to protect the rainforest. Well, thanks a lot and stay healthy. Bye bye.